Looking out into the universe, we see a tapestry of art. Beautiful, moving, swirling, enchanting galaxies showing every range of color. Such creation captures our eye and instills within us a sense of awe and wonder for the beautiful unknown. However, the most valuable treasure in all of the universe sits right within us, and that is the treasure of life. Life is like a small flame flickering in the incredible expanse of our universe. We only see one, and we know just how fragile that flame really is. Its emergence is something so complex and improbable, yet so probable, given just how many chances the universe gives us. We have billions of planets within our galaxy alone, yet Earth was chosen to be the cradle for life. Life emerged on Earth, whether you believe it was by the hand of God or random chance, it is here. And it is our duty to ensure that humanity's flame of life does not go out. With the sophistication of technology such as the James Webb Space Telescope, searching for life has never been this advanced. Yet even with such powerful tools, all we see before us is desolation. Countless lifeless planets, all with harsh landscapes, blistering heat, or frigid voids. However, in that graveyard of exoplanets shines occasionally a beacon of hope that we are not alone, or that perhaps our species can one day inhabit a new home. The ray of light in our dark and seemingly hopeless search for habitable planets that we are going to discuss today is the solar system of TRAPPIST-1. Welcome to my channel, TFC Tech, where we discuss fascinating topics surrounding science and technology. This channel will be your deep dive into bridging science fiction and the real world. So if you're as excited about these topics as I am, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Let's take a relatively short journey, cosmically speaking, to a small red dwarf star 39 light years away. This red dwarf star is named TRAPPIST-1 and is home to seven terrestrial planets, meaning they have a hard surface and are not gas giants like Jupiter or Saturn. Red dwarf stars are the most common type of star in our galaxy and are very cool, small stars. Compared to the Sun, TRAPPIST-1 is only 9% as large and has a surface temperature less than half of that of the Sun. Typically, these red dwarf stars are very volatile, spewing large amounts of cosmic radiation through enormous solar flares. However, despite their volatility, red dwarfs have extremely long lifespans which are achieved because of their low temperatures and fusion rate. But the star is not what makes the system of TRAPPIST-1 so special. It is instead the seven exoplanets caught in its orbit which really make the system catch our attention. Of the seven terrestrial planets, three of them orbit within the star's Goldilocks zone. The habitable zone, or Goldilocks zone, is a band around every star where astronomers have calculated that temperatures are just right, not too hot and not too cold, for liquid water to pool on the surface of an Earth-like world. If life is ever going to be found on an exoplanet, it would have to be here, where liquid water could exist. And if humanity is ever going to prosper on another world, it would ideally be in one of these Goldilocks zones. So while that sounds great and extremely promising, there are some pitfalls that we need to consider. Firstly, since red dwarf stars are so small, the planets inhabiting their Goldilocks zones need to have a very close orbit relatively speaking. For example, the entire system of TRAPPIST-1 can fit inside the orbit of Mercury. This puts them at a severe risk of damage from those volatile solar flares like I mentioned before. What this also means is that these planets tend to be tidally locked, or have one side facing the star at all times, just like our moon does with Earth. This forces one side of the planet to be constantly bombarded with starlight, and usually means that one side is extremely hot while the opposite side is eternally cold. While this is another red flag, it does mean however that there would be a hypothetical Goldilocks zone on the planet itself, an area of the planet just between the dark side and the light side, where it is an everlasting twilight, and theoretically just the right temperature for us. So now that we understand the mechanics of the system of TRAPPIST-1, let's cover the planets that inhabit this amazing solar system. The TRAPPIST planets are labeled B through H and there are 7 of them in total. While all of them are rocky Earth-like planets, they have been observed to be notably less dense than Earth. This means that while they are probably made of the same minerals like magnesium, iron, oxygen, and silicon, their ratios are probably pretty different. So let's take a look at each individual planet in this system and determine whether or not we could one day make them a new home for humanity. Before we break each of them down, let's cover their placement on the Earth Similarity Scale, which is a number assigned to each planet which describes just how Earth-like each planet is. While this isn't a perfect comparison, it is a rough estimate based on the information we have so far. As you can see, the planets within the Goldilocks zone rank higher on the scale with the one being exactly like Earth. 
The planets residing either too close or too far away from the star obviously score lower. Trappist 1D and E rank the highest with a 0.9 and a 0.86 respectively, and are the planets we will spend the most time talking about today. So with that in mind, let's continue. The first planet in this system is Trappist-1b, and it's the closest planet to the host star. It is a rocky super-Earth with an orbital period of 1.5 days. It is about 12% larger than Earth, and as it is so close to its star, has a surface of superheated gas and likely molten lava. Surface temperatures on this planet can reach up to 890 degrees Fahrenheit, so it is very much off our list of potential homes. Trappist-1c is very similar to 1b, just slightly cooler and further away from its star. It is slightly larger than Earth and like its two neighbors, expected to have a Venusian-like atmosphere. It and Trappist-1d are both just too close to the star to be habitable for humans, being bombarded by stellar radiation. Trappist-1d was a hopeful, as it is closer to the habitable zone, but has most likely fallen prey to a runaway greenhouse effect like that of Mars, meaning any water in its atmosphere is most likely evaporated away. NASA has put together a very cool 3D rendering of what the surface of TRAPPIST-1D could theoretically look like, and there's a lot to unpack here. As you can see, and as we've stated before, these are terrestrial planets with rocky surfaces, so they have included high cliffs and a desert-like surface. On the ground, we can also see some theoretical water pooling, as it is on the edge of that Goldilocks zone. Notice how the sky has a red hue. Because this is a red dwarf star, there is an abundance of infrared light with very little visible light being emitted even though this planet actually receives 4.3% more sunlight than Earth. If you were to live on this planet, the sky would only ever look like it's in twilight, as this planet, despite its close proximity to its star, only receives 1% of visible light as compared to Earth and the Sun. When we look up, we can very clearly see the neighboring planets. From the surface, you'd be able to see all six neighboring exoplanets, with some of them being as large in the sky as the moon is from the Earth. So as you can see, there's a lot of information here, and we can glean a very interesting and alien perspective from this. So big thanks to NASA for creating this awesome rendering. Next, we move to the most hopeful candidate for a future human home, TRAPPIST-1e. This exoplanet sits comfortably in the Goldilocks zone of TRAPPIST-1, and is the most Earth-like of the seven TRAPPIST planets. It has very similar mass, density, and gravity to that of Earth, and is the one most likely to have large oceans on its surface. Furthermore, TRAPPIST-1e was found to not have a cloud-free, hydrogen-dominated atmosphere, meaning it would not experience the runaway greenhouse effect, which likely ravaged the surface of its neighbors and the planet Mars. While that sounds great, the worst-case scenario would be that this means it has no atmosphere at all, and is another desolate wasteland. We hope that this means that oxygen is present and in large quantities, but we simply won't know for some time. This will be one of the many questions hopefully answered by the James Webb Space Telescope in the coming years, as scientists have already said that studying TRAPPIST-1 will be a particular objective of the telescope. In fact, 8.2% of the telescope's exoplanet studies will be TRAPPIST-1. So while our knowledge of what this planet is really like is extremely limited at the moment, that will hopefully change very soon. To finish off, let's quickly touch on the last three planets in this system, TRAPPIST-1f through H. Although planets F and G do fall in the system's Goldilocks zone, it is their atmospheres which quickly dismantle any hope for habitability. TRAPPIST-1f is an interesting water-rich world, although the water found here would be highly pressurized, causing it to most likely exist in a form of steam. It is less dense than Earth and has roughly 80% of Earth's gravity. This planet is extremely hot, reaching temperatures up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, despite its distance from the star and due to the extreme greenhouse effect caused by the steam. So as the information suggests, this planet is not habitable. Moving to the last two planets in this solar system, much less is known about them. TRAPPIST-1g is larger than Earth at 116% the size and is either theorized to have a steam atmosphere similar to TRAPPIST-1f or to have no atmosphere at all and be covered in ice. TRAPPIST-1h, much like its neighbor, is a very cold, icy world because of its distance from the star. Its density is much like that of Mars, and the planet is most likely surrounded by a thick ice shell. So all in all, the exoplanets of TRAPPIST-1 are extremely interesting and give us a reason to hope that perhaps life is possible on other worlds. And who knows, if we ever innovate to the level of light speed travel, we may one day get to explore them ourselves. But that's going to wrap up our video today, so if you enjoyed, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. But always know, your viewership is enough for me. See you in the next one.